All right, guys, so welcome to the Warhouse channel. Um, my name is Adam Steele, as you all know. Um, tonight, uh, probably a special <coughs> segment of our YouTube channel, I'm gonna be answering some, doing some Q&A, so answering some questions that um, everybody asked on the platform and like a text message, email, and as well as Instagram. And so we're gonna jump right into those, I guess. That's the say the, the least I can do. Um, so I'm gonna open this bad boy up and we'll get after it. Um, so first one, Miguel. What future locations are you planning to open um, another Warhouse gym? Right here, so uh, future locations. Well, right now you know we're at 2005 Main Street in Barrio Logan. This is our uh, second location from the very beginning of when I started the Warhouse and ever was conceptualized um, and started. It was in, like a, the, the story goes, and I'll get more into it here soon. A lot of people asked. Um, uh, it was an accident. I started the gym as a joke during COVID. Um, I really didn't think it was gonna work or be a thing. And then I, with my passion for bodybuilding and everything, it kind of just became something that I just didn't ever quit working at. And put my heart and soul into it. I've created things for it. And then everyone just responded, the community, friends, strangers, people, fell in love with the, the, the Warhouse itself. And uh, that's what happened. And so with being here, the future locations, um, some of our members know, I've talked about like, uh, we're looking at leases because the biggest factor with the Warhouse Gym is keeping it in the neighborhood for Barrio Logan, San Diego. And so um, we've had a couple leases, uh, competitive, uh, the zoning, we've had issues with zoning as far as like future locations that are really close by because we're in a very unique area on this side of the freeway by the waterfront that um, the zoning's been difficult because uh, having a fitness center is not the most simple thing. Family, I think it was Family Fitness on 16th got shut down and Imperial. And uh, they actually got shut down pre-COVID because of zoning from the city. And so we looked at a location right there. It didn't work uh, with ownership. And then uh, right now I am currently in hopefully getting ready to open contract and get in for purchasing of a building we've been waiting for for over eight months. If all that works out, I will announce the future location for the flagship and permanent home of 14,000 square feet of the Warhouse Gym here in San Diego, California. And after that, we have already set our sites on North Dallas, Texas in the Prosper area. And we are future to build there from the ground up and that will, should actually target November. And uh, by November, we will have our second location under construction, if not hopefully finished. They're doing, they do really quick work down there. I'm really excited. So um, hopefully that answers that question. A qu another question from a member, am I supposed to weigh my food raw or cooked? Um, okay. <laughs> Uh, I am not a professional dietitian. Um, I do have a background in physiology. I went to university, things like that. Um, in bodybuilding, multiple coaches, and I have uh, lots of friends that are coaches, and I have just a lot of experience being uh, in the industry for so long, um, in and out of it, as being just an enthusiast to a competitive bodybuilder, to um, someone who's actually been an ISSA certified personal trainer, NASM, I've done performance nutrition and physiology and uh, uh, mechanical engineering through um, the University of Utah, things like that. Um, I guess it comes to physics, also as in performance and density. So when you go to weigh your food, it is, and you can Google this and wiki check it all the fucking you want, um, you should weigh it after it's cooked because that is when you consume. That's very simple, simple as fact. You weigh, it, uh, you weigh it after it is cooked because that is the point of the state of the food that is consumed, whether it's chicken, whether it's meat, whether it's vegetables, and whether it is, um, whether it is uh, the most important one, is uh, we do not weigh our oatmeal. We use it in volume of scoops, like actually like solid volume, because then once you do, you cook it, you add water, but it also changes the molecular density of the material because it's a, it's a heavy brand um, as far as being oats. And so your body then actually can digest it versus passing it straight through your system and being a little bit more rough. So there are measurement uh, things that you'll find probably in a lot of really good coaches, diet plans to where that they actually tell you to cook it, but you'll measure it in a cup, not like by grams. You know, ounces versus grams, things like that. When it comes to meat, you can weigh it in grams. Vegetables, things like that, usually in cups, because when you cook it, you're adding moisture by softening, things like that. You make it more digestible, but you're also including hydration and stuff like that. So hopefully without diving into too much science, basic simple fact, when it goes in your mouth, it's cooked, weigh it when it's cooked. Enough said. Short and long-term goals um, for you personally and Warhouse by Coach. Yes, um, that's a that's a that's a big one. <laughs> Short and long-term goals for me and the Warhouse. Um, easy easy answer. The Warhouse gym. Short-term goals: 
keep trying to be the best we can for you um, with what we're doing and move into our permanent location and keep building machines, keep building out the shop, keep building out the brand. The apparel should be here next week. We're doing big things like that. Those are some of our short-term goals. I'm super fortunate to have Melanie on our team as our general manager now so I can take a lot of my workload and give it to her and she can help with a lot of that to answer the call for uh, members' needs, what we, the things I've been needing to get after that I just don't have time with my other businesses. So thank you to her, she's been amazing, love her to death. And then long-term goals for the Warhouse, obviously to expand, to bring the community that you all fall in, fell in love with and the standards that we have and keep for how we're revolutionizing the fitness industry between machines, community standards, and just our basic operations as well as how the business model works as well, which has been a lot of questions we've been getting as well um, on kind of like the back end with different people asking about how creating a gym, what to do to create a gym, and things like that if you start a startup. Um, and so long-term goals expand to other states. Obviously, anywhere outside of California would probably not be a, a bad idea as well as getting to other communities that have been asking us. We've been asked and we were brought to a pro event in Dallas to go to Dallas to build. We have friends that are asking us to build right now. Um, then we will be looking at Tennessee, Arizona, you know, Colorado, things like that, and then hopefully another location here in California. And so that uh, is the short and long-term goals for the Warhouse. For me personally, everything. Short-term goal, keep building the Warhouse and all my businesses uh, help to create more stable, long-term growth in jobs for my businesses, for my employees, for Impetus Media and the guys there, just creating awesome potential for them to grow their business and it's partnerships with us. Um, guys that work with my construction side and the welding side of the business, the firearm side, and then of course the gym side. And so with everything that I do, I want everyone to reach their financial goals and I want them to do that through growth with their potential, their education, their skills and learning. And I just want to be able to help people improve their own lives, not just by giving them something, but then creating it for themselves through education and skill practice. I think that's super important. I want to continue to do that. Um, long term, we're going to engineer an empire and we're going to fix this world. By damn it, that's my long term goal. Like, I don't know about world peace, but I know that uh, we're gonna make things happen. So that's what we're gonna do here. That's my goal, help everyone. And jump out of planes in every country. Move on to the next one. Tell us the story behind Warhouse, how Warhouse started. Um, okay, so I'm gonna be brutally honest with how the Warhouse came about. Because I think people have the right to know and why it's so strong and will never stop. Because I can sleep at night because the Warhouse exists. In 2019, um, I started a business, Legacy Dynamics. So I'm a, I'm a, I was a welder. Um, I uh, had broken my back um, the year before and had to start my life again, over again, and that's another story we can get into. Um, and so um, I built Barrio Dog Restaurant for my family and friends, and um, I was able to generate enough revenue because I slept on a bench and I walked to work from the border where I lived in Mexico. I uh, would get up at 3 a.m. I would take a $2 Uber to the border. I'd walk across at San Ysidro. I would get on the MTS tracks. I would ride it to Barrio Logan Station and I would walk to Barrio Dog on Logan Avenue and I started constructing, welding, fabricating, designing, and building every single aspect of that restaurant. And when I did that, I was able to restart my life by the grace of God and the willpower and the fact that I was just hungry. And um, I got a shop, um, fast forward a year, and I had 11,000 square feet on Newton Avenue. I hustled my ass off. Um, and then COVID happened, and luckily for um, me, my situation, and people working with me, um, my employees and some of the guys helping, you know, laborers and things like that, we had some really great design contracts, had an amazing client at the time going into COVID um, where we were doing a complete rebuild design of a home. Uh, fantastic contract, great, great revenue there. And so I was able to maintain and um, with that, I also had a young gentleman come through my door. His name is James. And he was starting a little business during COVID called Jim Bro Fitness. And you guys might be familiar with it. They're an awesome company here locally. Um, they sprouted up to meet the demand for people who needed to have a place to work out. 
um, for used equipment um, when the prices were insanely gouged and people were looking for equipment for like home gyms and things like that. Gym Bro Fitness and James um, answered that call. Um, and they're solid. He's, a, he's an active airman uh, in the Navy, uh, super rad. And um, you know, I've been able to call him a friend. And uh, they came to me and they wanted to start manufacturing their own squat racks and things like that. And that was pretty good. So they just had no idea how to get into it, but they thought manufacturing their own brand of equipment instead of just doing resale and things like that would be um, something they could provide a quality branded product. And so they came to us in, in my shop on Newton Avenue and um, walked in my door, asked me if we could do it. We told him we could help. He had no idea what they were doing, to be honest. Um, I don't blame him. I mean, they're not in manufacturing or anything like that. They had some people where he had done some work before in Vegas, kind of outsourcing, cutting, things like that. Anyway, long story short, it, the whole thing turned into a mess, getting like the wrong metal and things like that. We ended up doing some refit and redesign. Two months later, we delivered several uh, squat racks. As you know, the recon racks. Uh, built myself. And uh, Casey Herrant, my partner, who helped with the T-bar row that you guys probably heard about on Christmas when we were blackout drunk. So anyway, uh, finished the racks and ready for delivery. Um, the price was a bit more with redesign that he, that he thought. Um, ended up, uh, it was really difficult at the time with um, the economy and everything happening. They weren't prepared for the cost of the fabrication. And so we were able to work together as friends um, to do an offset. I'm like, you know what? He's like, didn't you want, think you wanted to have a gym? He uh, happened to have an entire Anytime Fitness that was liquidating in the East Coast, and they brought it to me. So we did a full offset of that contract. It, was, uh, it worked out really well, and I ended up with a ton of gym equipment in my shop. And so I had a whole space, about 2,000 square feet, under a low mezzanine that was in my shop that was pretty much dead space because I couldn't utilize it for industry because of the you know, ventilation and all those things. It was just too small, so it would have been offices. So instead, I spent every night for two months straight and I built walls, I built two stage platforms and if you scroll low enough into our IG page, you can see the original location of the Warhouse Gym that I started from scratch with, with some about 12 to 14 pieces of equipment. And um, I made a joke, we were all like trying to chase gyms at the time, whether it was you know, the, the Jim TG uh, PB um, up in Vista, we were driving up there because they were letting people in periodically. I don't know about the never closed, but I definitely got turned away. So a lot of people talk a lot in this industry. It's pretty crazy. And so um, we went to uh, Shock or Snap. It was Shock Fitness in PB as well. Um, and I remember walking up to a couple of friends and uh, told them, uh, I think I'm gonna build a gym. <laughs> and we joked about it. And they're like, man, you should do it. You know, you're a welder, you can build things. It's super cool. And um, so when the equipment arrived, late October of 2020, I decided that um, I would uh, start facilitating a gym. So I built a gym called The Warhouse, and um, it was really funny how it all happened. I really, wa I wanted to do it for me and to have a place. I really didn't take it seriously as an actual standalone business. And I got messages um, from friends that were like, dude, please open your gym. They saw me posting about it. And so I, I did. I uh, cut a door in the wall, literally cut out a fucking door. And I installed a door and I put a keypad on it. And anybody who wanted to sign up or Venmo me some money, we did a basic waiver from my business attorney, super good friend, and um, that's what we did. And it was very like loose. I had just kept paperwork stacked on a table. Um, we just, I improved it as much as I could and then it just became a passion project. The more I saw it helping people in need and it served its purpose. And then that's when the Warhouse was created. There was a, uh, a giveaway that Arsenal Strength was doing um, and they put it up on their webpage. And this is when everything changed for me. Uh, members that I have signed up and we had IFBB Pro, um, Troy, um, uh, they moved to, to Houston. He actually uh, is a coach, now a trainer for the Texans. Him and his wife, uh, Troy Mealy, and then um, Brian Johnson, Marissa, friends, Vinny, like other people, so many members, at least two dozen, sent it to me and it was like, comment about your local gym and why you love it so much and whoever gets the most will win like a 25K gym package of new equipment. And the response, without me even knowing about it, while I was welding on a seawall in Del Mar with my truck, 
and the gym was just running itself. This small little thing I did uh, in the middle of the night, every night for a couple of months, um, blew my mind. I couldn't comprehend how people could care so much about something I didn't really think was real. I just thought it was this funny thing on the side, like a backyard, you know, uh, setup. Um, and then that's when the response, the message is what people were saying about the gym, what it did for them, what it meant, who I was, the attitude, the atmosphere, the design, changed everything for me. And I decided that the Warhouse Gym was going to be what fitness needed to be in California. It needed to be what people have been waiting for, looking for, wishing for, and wanting for the longest time. A safe place to do what you need to do, to come in, progress, get after it, get out of your head, get in your head, whatever it is you need it to be, was what the Warhouse was. It was a veteran-built gym to protect people and to protect what they believe in. And that's when the Warhouse started. It came out of nowhere and I have not stopped building it since. And here we are. <laughs> and as you see, it has now been just one year since I took on some equipment and it has been a one year since I actually opened the doors. So welcome to the Warhouse Gym. <laughs> okay, what advice would you give someone trying to build their own gym or community? Um, okay, that's a deep one. <laughs> that's a big one. Um, what advice would I give somebody wanting to build a gym? Well, I would give them the advice that they can come see me and pay me thousands of dollars for advice that would help them build a gym and community. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe. Anyway, <laughs> time is money. Uh, it depends. Uh, building a gym uh, is a community, but building a community, depending on the purpose and what it is for, would then have its own variables of why you would be doing it at all. Hmm. First thing I could say, I read a book one time said, what makes you think you can fucking start a business? It was a great book, yeah. Um, if you wanna build anything, even a community, you need to have a reason. You need to have a reason that you're passionate about, which then means that you would work obsessively about it without looking crazy. That's kind of a big deal. Um, I gave the Warhouse everything I had for one year, every moment of my time that I was not welding, working, or shooting a gun, yeah. Um, and so, when it came to free time, this is what I was doing. And this is why it exists. Um, if you wanna start a gym, gyms take like anything else. They take material, they take equipment, they take uh, time. Any business takes time. Uh, prepare to set a goal, oh I can do this in six months, I can do this in three months, oh we can, we can open the doors in 60 days. Prepare for that to take three times longer than you would think. I'm not even kidding. I have friends that have been trying to open a gym for three years and they still can't get their heads out of their own asses. It's awesome. And they ask me for advice constantly until they wasted enough of my time and money that I decided to not know them anymore. And that's what happens. If you want to waste someone's time who will help you as a mentor, I recommend you don't do that because they will forget your name faster than they can fucking take a shit. <laughs> Most of your ideas are bad. That will be my first thing. Um, not every idea is great, so this is my advice, and I don't mean to offend anybody, but at the same time, I don't really care. Um, most ideas are bad, so don't be married to one. If you have a name that you wanna call something before you even know how to do it, you're an idiot, all right? You shouldn't give a shit what you call it until you know what it's gonna do. You shouldn't give a shit what you call it until you know how it's gonna work. Because when you get married to something like an idea, a name, and you think it's gonna be amazing and you literally have no idea how to dig a hole, you're already fucking up, all right? And so, if you want to start any business, know what you're doing. Because what makes you think you can run a business? Why would anybody want to pay you for something that you don't know how to do? Because that sounds literally idiotic. And so, if you want to do that, figure it the fuck out. And if, you're not gonna, if you don't think you're the best at it, don't try to be, start a business about it. Or you're gonna lose every time. Am I? Unless you are confident and passionate that you can bring something to the table, the world, that is better than everybody else, then you shouldn't be trying to sell it because you're just a jackass. Hard and simple, all right? I don't need to make it sound comfortable for you because it's not. It's hard fucking work and it's not easy. Anyone who thinks that they deserve it because they got a pro card or they have friends or they've been in the community or they think they stand for something, I literally do not give a shit, all right? If you can't get your head out of your ass enough to actually stand up and do one thing correctly, like sign a lease, Take on responsibility. 
even be honest with literally anything that you say, then what makes you think you can run a fucking business? At, what, at the end of the day, what makes you think you could pay someone a salary if you can't even pay yourself? So when it comes to starting a business, know what the fuck you're doing, make a plan, because if you do not plan, you're planning to fail, as we all hear the cliche. It can't be more real, okay? But if you really have the desire and you really know what you wanna do, if you care about it enough, then you will research, you will learn, and you will find out how to be the best at it. Whether it's a skill, whether you wanna be the best at fucking busting tires. And then you're gonna open a tire shop because you became the best at it. Here we are, Hector's Tires. Awesome, awesome shop. Now he's national, you know, things like that. You know why? Because he had a method he was passionate about and he taught it to other people and he monetized on how to be the best. He created great service, he had great skills and a wonderful brand and here he is now national as an example, okay? And that's what it takes. It takes undevoted belief that you know that you are better than others that are out there. Not that you're a better person or that you're better than anyone else, but that you have something worth of value to provide to the community and the world. The Warhouse is just that. I believe in it, I have built it with my own two hands and it stands up for itself and I stand up for it and everyone who's involved does just the same. It is branded and is growing exponentially. I can't thank everyone enough because it exists and it has a purpose. And now it is standing alone and doing its own thing. When it started paying its own bills was when it became a viable business. Now, it took a lot of work and I did a lot of shit for free. I didn't pay myself for an entire year. Technically, I still have not paid myself from this business. And it's been 12, now 14 months. I have put over $168,000 into it. But guess what? It made 5,800 bucks last, uh, yesterday. Yeah, it also had a $32,000 month last month. And you know what? So I think I'm okay spending 168 grand to invest in something over 14 months that can make $32,000 in one month, every month from here on out. And that's if we stay the exact same and don't do any better, don't grow at all, which is to say the least crazy. So if you wanna start something, believe in it, learn about it, become the best at it, and then don't quit. That's all I can say. What made you want to build a gym? I like lifting weights. So uh, what's your favorite part about building machines for your gym? This, this was one that, um, this is, okay, that's a good question. This is actually something that probably makes me stand out from literally every single gym in the world. <laughs> um, I built the warehouse literally with my two hands. Not only was it the floors, the walls, the mirrors, the lights, the entire theme and everything, I created it with my heart and soul. I also built the machines. I modified them and then I created, designed, and fabricated unique advanced fitness equipment that is beyond ergonomic to what the standard is out in the industry. Um, if you don't believe me, I don't care. Come see for yourself and then prove me wrong. But until you think you can do that, I think, you know, you come check it out either way. All right, and I appreciate it. You'll appreciate it, honestly. Any skepticism, please come find out. And so, um, uh, what made me want to build, um, at first uh, I had a gym and when I started caring more about it, um, it made sense for me instead of spend $3,500 on a belt squat that I thought was kind of cheap and not really well fabricated and it was what I do for a living as an industry, I had the advantage. So I literally designed and fabricated my own. And after graduating from the University of Utah with a degree in physiology and uh, other applied sciences, I didn't really uh, ever use my degree because after the housing crisis and everything, fitness and training before Instagram and all that wasn't really viable. And so I got into the industry. What's up, big dog? And then, um, so building a belt squat, I wanted to design something that I felt was better and having that unique background in fitness and also physiology kind of gave me a unique perspective of how I could take engineering mechanics and biomechanics and make a perfect harmony and um, more uh, advantageous and advanced for things that are better quality. Like as simple as like not having a skid plate on a freaking machine you're loading on your waist and squatting on, instead having actually free weight floor. So if it gets wet, you spill sweat, water, if it's outside, you won't slip and break your ass. Little things like that, that seem to be lost on the common sense factor of designing fitness equipment on the planet today. So we seem to do okay here with the war machines. So at first um, I needed it, didn't wanna pay for it, so I built it myself and I built it better. 
And then after that, I just kept rolling with um, wanting to make better equipment. So if that helps answer that question. And then you can check out our YouTube. We'll link it on here. Obviously, you're here. And then please check out the War Machines playlist, and you can find all of the advanced techniques there. So definitely check it out. Another question. Uh, do you think that having your degree in physiology has had a huge role in understanding what it is the fitness industry needs? 100%. Like I just explained in the previous question, um, with building the machines um, and then experiencing other equipment now, um, you can literally ask any member, any friend, one that knows this gym, anyone who came to this gym that doesn't anymore, anyone from that's ever experienced the war machines or any of my designs, we go into gyms when we travel and if we don't like how a machine feels because it's kind of an older model or archaic, it literally is disappointing because we miss our gym. <laughs> um, I love it, uh, the machines, I believe it gave me a great advantage to be able, to, as a fabricator, to create something that works better and hits harder and targets. So that's uh, definitely a huge thing. Somebody asked me today on the questions, are you responsible for the South Bay Muscle Gym IG page? This is fun. Okay, if anyone who knows me, I saw that, somebody sent me, a bunch of people sent me, talk about fucking local San Diego drama. Um, South Bay Muscle Gym, I don't know what that is. Um, as far as I know, it does not exist. Um, I'm super flattered that somebody had taken a photo from our Instagram of my gym, the, war, the Warhouse Gym, because it looks awesome, and used it on a fake profile, if that's the case. Um, I don't literally have time to give a crap about bot sites or fake shit. Um, I don't know what influencers and people who want to pretend to be relevant in the world that literally don't do anything want to say. If I could give any advice to anyone, um, stop talking and more doing. If you want to do something, just fucking do it and let it show instead of speaking about it. The more you talk, the less we give a shit because you're not doing anything. Um, so no, I did not build the South Bay Muscle Gym IG page or whatever. I don't even know. Um, I don't even know what that is. Sweet. Cool pick though. It looked awesome. And thank you for using it because that was a su super dope pick. I'm wildly flattered. Um, and no, I am not affiliated. The Warhouse Gym has no affiliation with whatever South Bay Muscle Gym is and South Bay Muscle. It is a, I believe it's a training company from Alan Mariano that um, is out of um, Imperial Beach. They have a, a, a small group of trainers, um, uh, have, a, have a unique background with some of uh, Alan and his experience and history in the fitness industry, um, worth, a take, worth taking a look at. But absolutely no, zero affiliation with the Warhouse whatsoever. I can guarantee that. And it will remain that way. There is no issue here we literally could give a crap, and I don't have time for people's petty bullshit. <laughs> so if you want to build a gym, build a gym. Stop talking about it. Uh, what are the two machines you would build for the Warhouse? Oh, what are the, what are the two new machines? Ah, I have a, we have a new combo for a chest press fly that's similar to the um, Arsenal arched fly. Um, it's uh, gonna be uh, essentially an improvement on any sort of a fly press design. It will be plate loaded as usual, um, something I just agree with a lot and like with the counterweights and the balancing and the stability as far as the continuous tension on how I design counterweights with plate loading. Um, it's going to have a adjustable seat so it can alternate from flat bench to incline and be a combo machine that will be heavy weighted with long handles that are articulate that will hit, as well as the plates will not slam each other losing your range of motion in the stretch and the motion if you were to load an actual 45 pound plate on it. So that is exciting, I'm looking forward to it. Um, and then also we are going to do uh, the long weighted um, prone leg curl, an isolateral uh, leg uh, plate loaded leg curl, similar to the Jeep seat that we have for the leg extension that you can see also on our channel. We're going to do a prone uh, hamstring curl. Been really wanting one, um, I really want to design uh, the, like the best one in the industry. I want to have something that's awesome, comfortable, uh, that's isolateral. I'm not really sure if any of those exist anywhere. Um, I gotta do, definitely do some more research. I just know what I want. And uh, I know what people will appreciate and what will feel good and work right. So that's gonna be coming out really soon. Should be a pretty easy construction, maybe take about a week. 
And so that would be the two machines that are next. And then Secret uh, reached out to Iron Core and our next purchase is going to be the first isolateral split leg press in San Diego. So that'll be here at the Warhouse very shortly. Tell us, Mr. Steele, about accomplishments that shapes your career in the fitness industry. Okay, um, accomplishments. I built the Warhouse. Ta-da. Right? And uh, so yeah, that. Um, as far as that goes, I think we're doing okay. <laughs> you know, um, it, I'm not ever gonna stop. Um, I have no desire to not let up until the world has what it deserves in the fitness industry. Um, I'm not an IFBB pro, I'm not a professional bodybuilder. I, I am educated more than most bodybuilders in the fitness industry as well as um, in fitness itself. Um, but I can tell you that hopefully that would be a direction I do want to compete in the future. Um, accomplishments. Um, three years ago I broke my back and I was in a wheelchair for six weeks and now I'm not. I feel pretty good about it. Where I'm at physically um, is supposed to be impossible. I also had heart surgery in 2015 when I died from an injury at another work. And so with that, um, I think I'm doing okay. Um, I, fitness has always been a part of my life. It has saved my life multiple times. Recently setting up this location, a lot of you probably saw the viral video of me falling from a 14 foot ladder from the ceiling and landing on my side on concrete. I did not break a bone. And I have no doubt when I shook the concrete that um, fitness literally saved my life. I didn't break my neck, I didn't break my ribs, I dis definitely dislocated some. And I'd like to thank my good friend uh, Jillian for being there to take me to the ER <laughs> and thank God for our battle angel, the one and only, to uh, get me up and push my ribs back into place. That was awesome. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was something. Uh, the fitness industry has saved my life, 100%. And the stories I hear about what the Warhouse has done for everybody in that regard is something that I will never ever take for granted is humbling every day. Thank you. Oh, here we go. What are your personal goals? Um, to be awesome, to be the best, to just be able to sleep at night and jump out of airplanes with the woman I love and have fun. Cool. So with that being said, I think that sums up most of the questions we have um, so far t tonight for our Q&A. So a little bit, um, we're going to do a montage. Um, I have tons of photos and videos of how I built these machines because when you use them, it seems impossible. But yeah, I did it with my own two hands and a welding machine. So we cut them out on a water jet right in my shop and made the parts and literally everything. If you come here as a member, you might catch me welding, doing a repair if we need to ever. But um, yeah, so make sure if you guys got to this part of the video, please like and subscribe. We appreciate it. Um, I know it's a, been a long one, um, a lot of history with the Warhouse and then we'll get more into anything. If you have any more questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll be sure to make, answer them directly myself. And uh, yeah, really appreciate the, our members, our community, everybody um, growing as fast as we can and love you guys, like just awesome. Welcome to the Warhouse Gym and you guys have a good night. Thank you.